Yeah, so if I go to create, if I go to create, and then go to shapes, then I have all my 2D stuff. So I have splines, curves, or extended splines. So like, and I can do a real quick T-shape, or so if I'm doing like I-beams or something, I can do that stuff, so channels. Like that. Very right, good. Then I go to modify, uh, extrude, or that is. Now I can pull it up, right? <clears throat> what were some other things we talked about? We talked about move and copy and scale, right? Now some people figured out how to copy things. Did anyone else try to copy things? How do you array? Ooh, array. Yeah, the array command here is different than anything else you'll ever see. Um, so we'll go over, we'll go over array today. Um, I'm going to try to copy things and what the difference between the different types of copies are, and then we'll get into doing the box modifiers. And I know we're a little behind since I wasn't here Monday, but I had a sick kid and I had to stay home. Um, baby's sick. <laughs> That's priority. Sorry. Alright, so I'm going to go to move. I'm going to pick on this object. If I hold shift and I pick on one of these axes, I can drag it and let go. It's going to ask me, what do I want? Do I want a copy, an instance, or a reference? And then how many do I want? So I can actually tell, we'll put all space them out evenly. So if I said I want four of them as copies. They give me four copies evenly spaced. Also when I'm selecting things, right here, these two buttons, this one tells me how I'm going to select. I'm going to use a rectangle, a circle, or um, a polygon, a, paint, a paintbrush. And then this one, this is going to be all the way inside. Or can it just touch it? Select. So I, I usually do those two. Now if I just touch it, it'll select it. Now it has to be all the way inside. This one, I can just draw a circle out. I don't. For me, that doesn't work as well. This one, you just kind of do a shape. So that one kind of works sometimes. Original copy instance reference, right? Or reference instance. What's the difference? That's what we're going to see right now. Hold shift and drag it. So the copy one is all, it's no longer related to this at all. So these two are, have no relationship except for they were the same when they started. If I change this one, so that's my original, I add some twist to it. See both the reference and the instance twisted. This one was the, I always forget which is which. The, the instance, so this one's the instance. Watch what happens if I add a modifier to the instance. It changes everything also. Because the reference and the instance are exactly the same. You do something to the reference, it'll do the exact same thing to the inference. Or you change the inference, it'll change back to the original. The one over here that was the reference, even if I look at them, look at, look at my list here. 
This what this list looks just like that, right? Yeah. What do you see there? There's a little black line right here. Anything above this line is only going to apply to that one. So above the line only applies to that one on a reference. Below the line will apply to everything. Except for the copy. So you can have things that are similar. If you want them to be different at all, use reference or copy. Reference means if I change the original one, all my copies will change. Okay? And also when we're applying materials, you can tell it to apply to all the inference or all the reference materials, all objects also. And it'll do materials on everything at once. <clears throat> so, which one do I use most often? I usually copy. Unless I, w I know they're going to be identical and stay identical, then I'll use the inference. Yeah? The symmetry? You know, doesn't that do the same thing as a copy? Not, not a copy, but a. This one? The model? Inference? Yeah. But here I can move these wherever I want. They don't have to stay lined up. I can move that one over there. So anything I do to one of them, it'll do to the other one. So if I've got a bunch of columns, I'll make them all instances. So if you edit one, it changes all of them. That way they're not all different. I don't have to go back and change every single one. Um, all right. So a question on that? Someone else asked me that the other day, and I forgot to look it up. Mm -hmm. um, so make that an instance. Can I un... I have to figure out. So I'm going to go ahead and make this block. <coughs> what was the question? If you can unlink the instance. And that's another one I have to look up. So I don't know off the top of my head. <coughs> Alright, so you also want to know about array. So with array, I'm going to pick an object first. Because if I go to my uh, tool, array, it doesn't let me do it. So I have to pick my object first, then go to array, and I get a big box of stuff. And this is a non-modal box, that means that I open that box, I can't do anything else. A lot of the boxes, or no, it's a modal one. Yeah, whatever. It, it's where I can't get back to A lot of the boxes in Max, I can have the box open and still work behind it. Array hasn't changed, and so once this one is open, it's stuck. So you kind of want to set up so you can see where you're gonna where you're gonna do your array off on the side. Um, your zoom and everything ahead of time, so that way you don't have to because you can't check it without accepting the, the array. <clears throat> and so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna turn preview on because I want to see what's gonna happen. And so the way it works, so copy instance whatever, is all of these values are for the first dimension, or first kind of dimension of it. So if I told it to go one inch, <coughs> there's 10 of them. So I have 10, one inch on the X. If I said one inch on the Y, it's not going to make another row. It's going to make the next piece go over one and up one. What's happening if I do Z? It's going to go up it's going to go up one of the Z also. Is 
if I give it a rotation, so if I rotate around the Z, and it kind of multiplies. 11 degrees there, 22 degrees there, 33, 44, all the way. <coughs> so, and it's rotating around the center of the part. So if I cancel this, if I look at my, when I pick on the part, it gets a little UCI, a little coordinate thing. That's where the center is. That's where it's going to rotate around. So if I go to the hierarchy and I affect the pivot, I can move that out and then take it off. Now if I do a ray, Now it's not turning around itself, it's turning around that center point for each one of those. <clears throat> um, if I want to do another row, what I would do is I'd put a 2D array and now I'd put in uh, an X value and tell it to be 3. And I can put a Z value also. No, go oh. Stairs. Oh, I can't use the mouse, but I can use my 3D mouse. Wow. 3D mouse kind of bypasses <laughs> this guy. <laughs> so you can see what's going on there. So another benefit of using the 3D mouse. Uh, but you don't get any rotates on the third, second and third dimension. If I tell it to Z zero and do a third dimension. Now I can add some Z and get a pattern like that. Okay. So if I want to do a brick wall, I could do it. Uh, now I've got a brick wall. Of individual bricks. Is that the best way to do a brick wall? Of course, the grout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, this isn't the best way to do a brick wall because I can do a material that's brick that's a brick pattern on just one piece, and it'll look the same. When we get to doing the, um, if we if we want to get if we want to get into the mass effects where objects actually affect each other, so we throw a ball. And then it figures out how the wall is going to react. Then they need to be different pieces. But if we just want to see a wall, then we just put a, a material on it, just as one piece. Try that real quick. Want to try and do an array? All right. 